Jack Dorsey stepped down as CEO from Twitter yesterday, and I gotta say, um, man, I don't even remember the name of the new CEO. Uh, it will... I've literally learned of this person's existence yesterday. Um, however, I gotta say, this this is quite the move that he has decided to make um, the first day on the job. This... Tw uh, this Twitter thread was published. Let's take a look at this and uh, we will discuss it shortly thereafter. Sharing images is an important part of folks' experience on Twitter. People should have a choice in determining whether or not a photo is shared publicly. I, I, I agree with this in abstract, but let's continue. Uh, to that end, we are expanding the scope of our private information policy. This is the tweet that sparked much of the brouhaha. Um, and it is so poorly worded, but let's, uh, <laughs> let's read it. Beginning today, we will not allow the sharing of private media such as images or videos of private individuals without their consent. Publishing people's private info is also prohibited under the policy, as is threatening or incentivizing others to do so. This is basically doxing, so that was already prohibited. I, uh... I can't imagine it wasn't. So, moving on. Let's unpack what this means. Spoiler alert, it's still garbage, but let's, let's read it anyway. Um, this policy update will help curb the misuse of media to harass, intimidate, and reveal the identities of private individuals, which disproportionately impacts women, activists, dissidents, and members of minority communities. Now, the funny part is, uh, as far as... Um, this stuff disproportionately affecting women and uh, members of marginalized communities. I have no trouble believing that. I'm sure it's true. Um, I don't even see this as a controversial statement, quite frankly. Now, throwing activists in there, I, I, I think that is um, also clear. Um, but, you know, there are good ways and shitty ways to solve legitimate problems and i don't think this is uh how to go about it but we will continue images slash videos that show people participating in public events like large-scale protest sporting events would generally not violate this policy for more on what is not in in violation read the full policy here oh we will we will circle back to that don't you worry but for now let's um finish reading this thread to be clear, we require a first-person report of the photo slash video in question from an authorized or, or an authorized representative. After we receive a report, that particular media will be reviewed before any enforcement action is taken. Context matters. Our existing private information policy includes many whoops includes many exceptions in order to enable robust reporting on newsworthy events and conversations that are in the public interest. We will take into consideration whether the image is publicly available and or is being covered by journalists or if a particular image and the um or if a particular image and the accompanying tweet text adds value to the public discourse is being shared in the public. Wait, let, let's read this sentence again. I, I shouldn't have paused the journalists. So we will take into consideration whether the image is publicly available and or is being covered by journalists um, or if a particular image and the accompanying tweet adds uh, tweet text adds value to the public discourse is being shared in public interest or is relevant to the community. I think this is just poorly written, but uh, let's circle back and read this part here, um, which again, spoiler alert, it's not good. We will not read all of this in its entirety, but uh, I did read it all today. And, um, you know, there's been a lot of this happening over the last couple months of some um, event 
taking place, sparking all sorts of outrage. And then when I dig deep and I um, look at primary sources, which I'm a fan of, um, I've realized, you know what? It's not so bad. These people are um, over-exaggerating, things like that. But um, this, this, this case is not it. This is just bad. Um, Jesus Christ. Uh, wow. Let us read the relevant parts here. So this is from the, um, the, this is the actual private information policy from help.twitter.com. Okay. So, uh, you may not publish or post other people's private information without their express authorization and permission. Again, like the, the parts that I will skip are basically doxing, uh, which is what this describes. We also prohibit threatening to expose. Yes, yes. Uh, in addition, you may not share private media such as in images or videos of private individuals without their consent. However, we recognize that there are instances where users may share images or videos of private individuals who are not public figures as part of a newsworthy event or to further public discourse on issues or events of public interest. Oof. So basically... Um, the reason this sucks and, and the whole document has this kind of vague language in it. Um, what is newsworthy and what is in the public interest and what is free public discourse will be left in the hands of a handful of people. Um, and by that, I mean, whatever committee inside of Twitter is responsible for this. And let me be clear. Um, I, I don't think... I doubt that many of these decisions are going to come down to one person's opinion. However, even if there are a hundred people on this council that is going to determine uh, whether or not something is newsworthy or, or of the public interest, a um, hundred people is a handful of people in this context compared to like the totality of Twitter. Let's continue. Oh, yes, I will skip this part entirely. Sharing someone's private information. This is doxing. Doxing is wrong. Don't dox people, all right? Let's skip to the, the, the real part here. Sharing private media. Posting images is an important part of users' experience on Twitter, where individuals have a reasonable expectation of privacy in an individual piece of media. We believe they should be able to determine whether or not it is shared. Um... <sighs> I hate this. Let me circle back to this later. Sharing such media could potentially violate users' privacy and may lead to emotional or physical harm. When we are notified by individuals depicted or their authorized representative that they did not consent to having media shared, we will remove the media. This policy is not applicable to public figures. Uh, by the way, Tim Pool did a shitty ass job of covering this in his segment because he used himself as an example of, hey, well, sometimes people share things with me and that causes emotional harm. You're a public figure, man. Um, I remember watching his segment. I said, did you even read this out loud? I said that. So let us clarify what is and isn't a violation of this policy. This is the interesting part. Under this policy, you can't share the following types of private information without the... Con okay, yes, so address doxing, 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 doxing. The following behaviors is also not... Okay, threatening to dox, doxing, doxing, doxing. What is not a violation of this pri uh, policy? Um, okay, this is still in relation to doxing, but I will uh, uh, just skim it. Like, basically... If I share my own private information or uh, sharing, okay, information that isn't considered private is like your name, your birth date and age, uh, place of education, your job, descriptions of your physical appearance. Darth Shady has green hair. Um, what else? Gossip, rumors, accusations, yada, yada, yada. Here's, here's the fun part. For media, the following are not in violation of our policy. The media is publicly available or is being covered by mainstream media. 
God, I wish I had an echo sound effect. But yeah, that I think I groaned out loud the first time that I read this. Uh, let's continue anyway. The media and accompanying tweet text adds value to the public discourse or are shared in public interest. Again, this is going to be left in the, in the hands uh, in the hands of a handful of people. It contains eyewitness accounts or on the ground reports from developing events. Um, what else? The subject of the media is a public figure. Yes. So who can report violations of this policy? It's basically the person being depicted. Anyone can report private information that has been shared. Uh, again, this is doxing. Here it is. When reporting private media, we need a first person report in order to make the determination that the image or video has been shared without their permission. We accept reports from individuals depicted or their authorized representatives, such as parents, lawyers, legal representative. And then informations on how to uh, complain, basically. I don't remember reading this section. What happens if you violate the policy? Sharing private media. If you violate this policy by sharing private media of an individual without their consent, we will require you to remove the content and temporarily lock your account while you remove the media. Woo! If you report that your account was sus suspended in error, you can submit an appeal. Okay, so here's why this is cringe, okay? Um, I think the problem of, uh, you know having your a depiction of you shared without your consent is legitimate however this is the part which i i fucking can't stand there are places where you have a reasonable expectation of privacy and there are places where you don't so if someone were oh here's an example let's say that i'm standing in front of one of my windows and someone takes a picture of me without me noticing. Now, if if that picture got shared, I I do even though I'm standing in front of one of my windows. I think there's a reasonable expectation of privacy, you know? Okay, sometimes a neighbor will walk by, things like that. But if some fucking uh, paparazzi reporter snaps my photo, I don't think that's cool. And having uh, the ability to um yank that from Twitter, uh, I can see the appeal to that. However, if I'm in public, um, it's like overhearing a conversation and it's, it's really, it's ridiculous that, um, once you leave your home, that basically the only people who can, uh, share pictures of you on Twitter are, uh, you know, journalists uh, or mainstream media people. Uh, this is, I, I, I can't see this ending up badly. Uh, and as a matter of fact, the, uh, like, I, I shared this, I quote tweeted this before actually reading the, um, the deep in policy, but this um, really cringe tweet uh was was bad news and let us read some reactions actually uh let me just vet for porn real quick so you're making it up as you go if it's taken in public it's publicly available full stop yeah exactly and uh there are high profile examples of this uh which i thought of which um you know one of them is good one of them is not so good and uh, getting rid of one would will get rid of the other. And that's what I find uh, absolutely cringe. Um, it's an attempt to silence Project Veritas. I wouldn't doubt that, but I, I, I don't think the information of this is in evidence, if you know what I mean. So uh, I would um, I would ex nay on the uh, mind reading day. So. Uh, I can't find any right now. This is the tweet that made me sh chuckle. Uh, this is my neighbor, Felix. <laughs> yeah. Um, I didn't know this picture was here when I used my kitchen example. Uh, let's see here. 
Everyone is a journalist. The idea that only the liars hired by corporate media who act on behalf of the government are journalists is patently absurd. Absolutely. Let me give that a heart. So here's the thing. Um, I can't find any right now, but I remember um, many of the reactions that I saw on Twitter to this uh, earlier today were, were in the lines of basically cops are going to use this to, to crack down on uh, people reporting on uh, police abuse. And is a policeman a public figure or not? Uh, I think that is um, they're definitely public servants, or at least on paper they are. Um, so I'm not sure how that would play out, but I think that's a really valid concern. Now, to circle back to the two concrete examples that I thought of ever since I saw this cringe. And again, one of these is if, if, if the propagation of these kinds of incidents was, um, no longer allowed on Twitter, I'm not entirely convinced that it would be a bad thing, but it's, you know, the collateral damage isn't worth it, and that will be clear later. So, the whole subgenre of public meltdowns uh, in stores, uh, the, the infamous, it's ma'am, um, you know, I can see how um, this person probably had a bad couple of weeks or months after melting down in this GameStop. Um, however, a much more, um, how can I say this? A much more clear example of this, which would, if we stop people from propagating shit like this, we also prevent this. Uh, Y'all remember that, that dog walker who tried to commit homicide by cop um, and, and, called the police on the uh, bird watcher in, in Brooklyn Park or Central Park. Um, shit like that would it would go down too. And I uh, I won't play the video, but um, this story was went far and wide. Y'all undoubtedly know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, and by the way, kudos to the guy for um, speaking out and saying, hey, uh, maybe we shouldn't try to destroy this person's life. Now... He, he is more patient than I am, but, uh, yeah, the whole, uh, there's a black man, he's a black man. well, she, she didn't literally say that, but, uh, anyway, if someone only had her voice to go on, um, it was as if he was on top of her, right? Um, and, and to prevent things like this from being reported to protect people like this, uh, I think is collateral damage that will spell bad news for Twitter. Now, one thing that I will say, um, uh, a, a principle, <laughs> a principle that I heard, uh, somewhere on the internet is that when you're the new guy on the job or when you're first assigned uh, in a leadership position, it's a good idea to make moves early to like get the ball rolling really quickly. Um, uh, Trump did that his first couple weeks in office. He got a lot done. Um, of course, people who hate Trump uh, think that's a bad thing. Whether it's good or bad is irrelevant to this conversation. The point is he made moves. He made them quick. And um, Scott Adams depicted this as an example of, um, you know, how it's generally a good strategy when you're the new CEO to just bust in the place and make it yours. Now, is this the way to do it? Well, you're, you're definitely making moves, but uh, I... I would argue that uh, this is not going to have the desired effects, and uh, I see two outcomes for this. Actually, no. Fuck. Okay, so there's one potential possibility is that they're going to pull in OnlyFans and just change their mind in, like, less than a week. Uh, the other possibility, and this is more an opportunity, is for uh, Twitter alternatives to become more popular. Now, 
I have spoken of uh, I've spoken about alt tech many times before, and most of them are objectively inferior to the service that they attempt to replace. Um, Gab is definitely um, not good, and and I'm not even talking about the uh, overwhelming presence of Nazis on this on the platform. Uh, it's it's just not as good as Twitter. Um, I am blown away that Parler is as popular as it was before uh, getting yanked off of all um, uh, app stores. Uh, Parler is really bad. Um, however, people who already had a platform and who could just say, hey, I'm on Parler now, um, for those people, it's interesting. But for like average schmucks like me and you, uh, maybe not so much. So if Twitter doesn't pull in OnlyFans and uh, changes its mind in uh, less than a week, we shall see how that plays out. One thing is for sure. I um, I already know how I will adapt my behavior, so I'm not that worried about it. But I am very curious to know what you think. So please leave a comment below sharing your thoughts. And if you liked this video, you will certainly enjoy this video right here. So tap on this card to watch that one. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you soon. <laughs>